Good morning, and welcome to the American Cathedral in Paris on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also the day of the blessing of the animals. I see a few. I see stuffed animals, too. It's a soggy day in Paris, so I hope if you couldn't bring your pet, you brought a stuffed animal or a picture. And for those of you who are watching online, please stay tuned. At the end of our blessing of the animals here, we will do an online blessing, so please wait for that. And if you have a pet at home, please find that pet. Welcome to all. Bienvenue à la Cathédrale Américaine.
Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of creation, we thank you for all that you have made and called good. Grant that we, following in the way of blessed Francis, may care for and delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he had inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the in the coming world about which we are speaking to angels. But someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings that you're mindful of them or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than angels. You have crowned them with the glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, 
God let nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subject to them, but we do see Jesus, for who, all, for, for who all a little while has made lower than angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering and death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through all who things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of salvation through suffering. For those, for the one who sanctifies and for those who are sanctified, all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, and in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The world, word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up into his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Help us, O God, to become masters of ourselves so that we might become servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hands and work through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. If you didn't know before you came to church this morning or the last little while since we've arrived by meows and barks, you've probably gathered that something different is happening today. It is the annual blessing of the animals. And by a show of hands uh, or paws or otherwise, do we have dogs here? Do we have cats here? Do we have lizards here? Okay. Birds? We'll come back to birds. We've got an idea of what we have in church this morning, of who we have with us who normally might not be with us. It is a strange thing that we do each and every year with this blessing of animals, and so it's worthy, especially after a couple of years removed from actually having animals in the house with us, reminding ourselves why we do what we do. And our uh, lessons this morning actually help point the way. Uh, from our lesson from Hebrews this morning, we get one core idea of why it matters, why it's important that we should bless animals and have them with us in church this morning. And one is that they remind us of a fundamental purpose that we have as human beings that God has bestowed us with, which is that we have a particular role in creation, as we have both in Hebrews and our psalm this morning, reminded that we, God has created us just a little lower than the angels, but with great responsibility for so many creatures below us, around us, even beneath our feet. We should take that literally, think about that literally within the text that morning of we have these creatures who we can see and touch and give us all the warm fuzzies this morning, but we also have relationship and responsibility and duty and love for all creation. Those things that we can see and those things which we cannot see, but without which we could not live and move and have our own being and purpose. So that is a fundamental ethic that we have been given and has been handed down to us through our ancient ancestors, who without the benefit of microscopes and any number of other fine-tuned, finely-tuned instruments of science that we have now today still knew 
that our duty and responsibility as unique creatures, creatures in this world is to care for creatures, human and otherwise, who we cannot see and will never know. They matter to us. They belong to us. We belong to them. And so we should bless, even as we bless all of our warm and fuzzy creatures who are with us this morning and who we have a direct relationship with, we need to be mindful of all of those creatures without whom if we lose them, and we are losing them, we know, faster than maybe at any period in human history, that we need them to survive and to live and to flourish, not just for us, but for all of our children who are here and for the generations who are yet to come. So purpose is why we are here as human beings. And the second reason we're here with our blessing of the animals is joy. We do celebrate these creatures who are warm and who are fuzzy because they bring things to us. They bring a joy to our lives that wouldn't otherwise be there. Whether you have an animal in your household or not, when we see them and encounter them, there is a joy that comes to us so often that human beings with all of our complexity and complications that we have in relationships can often be, let's be honest, a little more difficult in that regard. So joy is what we are after. And so we can take from our gospel, especially this one from Mark this morning, that is about the joy Jesus is in encouraging children to be brought to him, which we can take literally as little children, but is also a reminder that we are all God's children, every single one of us. That is, a fun, that is maybe the very first identity that we all have is that we are first and foremost children of God, and that our purpose that we offer and share with creatures is also to derive joy, a joy that can only come from God, which Jesus has to offer us. And so something that's interesting that Hebrews reminds us of this morning is that Jesus has been given to us as a sign. The perp one of the core purposes of Jesus coming among us as one of us is to teach us that we can look at what Jesus did. And Mark, as a gospel, is a beautiful author of showing us what Jesus does, showing us the things that are important to him and important to God. You may remember in the gospel of John, John is a master of dialogue. John puts so many more words in Jesus' mouth, including I have come so that your joy may be complete. John puts it explicitly in words, but Mark puts it in showing us what Jesus does. Bring the children to me. Come to me. I have something to offer you that the world cannot offer you. Remember this. St. Francis, whose feast day makes it possible, in which we, we celebrate and mark this blessing of the animals each and every year, modeled this. One of his most famous sayings that we can live by is preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. This is also one of the things that is so beautiful about animals is they can communicate so many things of joy and purpose and wholeness to our lives without having any capacity for human language at least. They preach the gospel to us at all times and sometimes, maybe, use words. And that is a model for the kind of evangelism, the kind of life that we can live and change the world itself by living out joy in our own lives. Living out the gospel that we've been given by how we live our lives much more than what it is that we even say about what it is we believe. So joy is something to be taken seriously, not as something frivolous. I, one of the things that's been beautiful for me to think about this past week about joy is that joy is a form of justice. That there are things in this world, in the com complexity of human society, away from the society of animals, that we have, unfortunately, a practice of taking things from others. That that is one of the things that Jesus is speaking against in this gospel do not remove barriers to your siblings, fellow children of God, from having wholeness and fullness and joy in life. But joy is one particular thing that cannot be controlled or withdrawn or withheld. Joy oftentimes itself is a symbol of defiance against injustice. 
And one of the things that we can constantly be amazed in our lives is the way that we can bear witness to the fact that those people who are so often the most oppressed can yet have the most joy. And that is not only a form of witness to the good news of God's love and the way that it can overcome all things, but it is also a way of showing showing defiance and claiming agency for those who have been uh, subjected to injustice. And so joy itself is not something that is trivial. Joy is something to be taken seriously. And now I want to return to a specific joy when we think about, okay, Nat, that's great. Life is hard these days. Life is hard in general, and especially it's not getting any easier even as things start to lighten up in the world around us. I'm feeling a little low on my joy tank these days. So how is it that I'm supposed to fill it up again? And this is one of the things I was thinking about this morning, sources of joy that I had to take seriously and reflect upon in my own life. So on Sunday mornings, I don't know if you have a routine on Sunday mornings. I have a routine on Sunday mornings, getting ready to come here to do church. And one of the things that I do when I get up, I make my coffee, uh, I get ready, and then I turn on uh, BBC Three. Uh, radio, which is a class, largely classical music, especially on Sunday mornings. But for several months, earlier this year at least, there was a segment every single Sunday at the same time that focused on birdsong. And there was about a five to ten minute segment where there was a woman that came on the air every single Sunday and taught us, those who were listening, to the various particular songs of particular birds that we could see and know and listen for. And I have to admit, that I thought it was pretty silly. And for me, I derived some sort of joy from kind of taking this moment of silliness and frivolity and triviality to this notion of someone listening to the bird and telling me, and oftentimes in human voice, mimicking the birds themselves. It sounds pretty silly. And I was felt pretty solid in my judgment of that for many, many months, until uh, the last couple of weeks I came across an interview with a man named Drew Lanham who is a professor of wildlife ecology at Clemson University in South Carolina in the United States. And he is an ornithologist. He studies birds for a living. And this is what he said. Well, I do think that joy, in part, is the justice we give ourselves. And for me, the songs of birds are important. They signal the beginning of the day and the end of it and what birds are doing in their lives and carrying on. But I think you try to have joy as something that no one can take from you, that it's something that you can hold in your heart in a way, and you can protect that joy in a way that when all those things on this rough trod trail around you are threatening you, that you at some quiet moment can pull out that joy and experience it, even if it's just for a moment. That's the birds flying through the yard, that's the cardinal, that's the song For me, he says, I have to find those moments daily. And again, it's a struggle. And I've had those days where it's just nothing is going right and nothing seems to be coming that's going to go right and everything seems like it's going to go wrong. But in that moment of that little brown bird that's so inquisitive, that sings reliably, in that moment that I'm thinking about that wren, I'm not thinking about anything else. That's joy, Lanham says. And so sometimes I think we have to recognize the joy that the world didn't give us and that the world can't take away in the midst of the world taking away what it can. End quote. Joy, my friends, is not trivial. Not the joy that God has to give us. The joy that the world cannot give us and the world cannot ever take away. It is a joy that is accessible It is a joy that is reliable, it is a joy that is durable, and it is a joy that is transformative. It will literally change how we feel about the world and our lives when we need it most. St. Francis lived his life this way, which is why 800 years later we are in church with dogs and cats and our siblings throughout the world have snakes and horses and any number of things that they're bringing to church to be blessed today. We can live our lives as St. Francis did and does. We can live and find our moments of joy each and every day in our dogs, in our cats, 
in the birds of the air, in the creatures of the sea, in all of those little quiet moments that we can both draw in and take away for a later time. God has given us joy with and for a purpose. So my friends, on this day, let us claim our joy and let us claim it each and every day. Let us be nourished by it and let us live out our lives with such a joy that it inspires others to seek their own. And we will be sending our fellow children of God into the world, preaching the gospel at all times and when necessary, using words. Amen. So, it is that time. And so, as our, the choir will stand and lead us in music, we will have our blessing of the animals. For those who have brought animals or stuffed animals or photos to be blessed, there will be two stations to come forward to this morning. There will be one at this end of the center aisle. Uh, Dean Lucinda will be here. I will be at the back. You can come to either side, whichever one is closest to you, or in, this is something to think about in the 21st century, we are blessedly live streaming our service. If you would prefer not to be on camera, you can come to the back station where I will be. So, dear friends, creatures great and small, come one, come all, for the blessing of the animals.
whole creation into covenant relationship with you, and you put in our hands responsibility for the care of the earth and its creatures. We pray for all to whom you have given life and being, saying, Loving God, God, keep keep your planet planet and and people in peace. For the well-being of the earth, for its resources of water, air, light, and soil, that they may be tended for the good of all creatures, we pray. Loving Loving God, God, keep keep your planet and people in peace. For the animals of the earth, wild and domestic, large and very small, that they may be treated respectfully and without cruelty, and that we may know ourselves one with them in the web of God's creation, we pray. Loving God, keep your planet and people in peace. For all who shape public policies affecting the planet and its creatures, that they may consider wisely the good of those who will come after us, we pray. Loving God, keep your planet and people in peace. For the creatures and the human beings of your world who are ill or in danger, pain, or special need, especially refugees, migrants, and all who seek a safe home, and for all who suffer from the unjust, violent, or excessive use of the Earth's resources or their devastation by war, that all may one day live in communities of justice and peace. We pray. Loving Loving God, God, keep keep your planet and people in peace. For the creatures and the people of the Earth whose lives have contributed to the fruitful abundance of this planet, we pray. Merciful God, keep your planet and people in peace. We pray especially today for Henry Mackenzie and John Wommeldorf, commending their souls to God, sure that God's love will do more for them than we can ask or imagine. We pray for those we love who are ill as well, especially for Leslie and Teddy. We pray for all the pets who bring us joy and those we have lost over the years in loving remembrance. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning and all of you, humans and animals, welcome to the cathedral. I particularly like it when I hear a barker or meow during a hymn. I figure that's an animal giving praise too, uh, which I love. Uh, you, there you go, during announcements too. Uh, you are all very welcome here. I do know that we are getting fairly full, uh, at least in terms of our social distancing. And if anybody is beginning to feel unsafe, that's the first thing I want to say. We have started an overflow room in the parish hall where you can watch the service online. If you come in and you feel it is so crowded that you're not comfortable, or for that matter, if you have a child who's screaming her head off and needs five minutes out before she comes back. Uh, In any event, and children, by the way, are so welcome And I use that phrase, screaming your head off deliberately, because only if they are really unhappy do we want you to remove them. We like the sounds of children, and we like the sounds of animals. Anyway, there's an overflow room in the parish hall, and if you're in there for a service, you can come in for communion, but please know it's there. We have also started to have childcare again in the nursery. 
you can just ask at the front desk as you come in. Uh, today, Sundays with the Dean start, and if you signed up for that, or even if you didn't, go on over to the deanery after the service. It's just across the Dean's garden, or ask one of the ushers. Alas, it is so wet, we will not have a coffee hour. We are not yet ready to put all of us in the parish hall with our masks off, which they would be to drink coffee. So I'm sorry. It's the first time we've been rained out, but we have been rained out. Uh, this coming week, uh, the 20s and 30s will meet on Wednesday. Um, there's information in the bulletin or contact uh, Canon Cats. Also, next Sunday, Bible study starts, the Gospel of Luke. I will meet in person with whoever wants to meet in person. There will be a later Zoom to catch up anyone who couldn't make the meeting. And then the future meetings will be on Zoom. But I wanted to start in person, so plan for that if you're interested next Sunday. Uh, there's a parish-wide discernment process going on. There's information in the bulletin and a chance to... Um, we recorded last week's forum with Maurice Seaton. It was excellent, really good, and explains what we're up to, so I urge you to watch that if you were not there. We need volunteers. We always need volunteers. This church runs on volunteers, and that's who we are. I mean, we are the church. We do it. So specific things are listed in the bulletin. Um, I have listed some particular opportunities to do with um, hospitality. Uh, I could use, actually, I asked for a volunteer and I got one there. I can always use more. Uh, specific things for welcome and inclusion. We need an administrator organizer. We need concert hosts. All of this is in the bulletin. Today, I am making a pitch for adult acolytes. Have you wanted to learn how to serve at the altar? Please speak to me or to Canon Katz or just come next Saturday at 10.45. We are training adult acolytes, and either of us would be happy to talk to you more about that. I've also been asked on behalf of the Francophone service to mention that, that every Saturday at 5.30 is a French service, a Eucharist, here at the cathedral. You can come in French, you can come in English, but it's a particularly good service if you have friends who are not English speakers, but you think would like the cathedral, our worship, our ethos, our life together. Think about bringing friends to that service Saturday nights at 5.30. The most important announcement I make every week, oh, I know what I also want to say, we're singing. Yes, we're singing, sing out. What a great day to do it when the animals are joining in. Keep the masks on, but we're singing. Yay. Thank you, Zach. Uh, the most important announcement, you are welcome here. You are welcome at God's altar. It's God's altar, not ours. If you are hungry for Christ and would like to receive communion, please come, whoever you are and however you find yourself. Sont invité à la communion tous ceux qui ont faim de Christ. La table que nous dressons n'est pas la nôtre, mais celle de Christ. Elle est ouverte à tous. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Life giving God, your word speaks to the void, calling into being things that are not, inviting us to share your work of creation. We thank you for the long ages of gathering stars and cooling earth, of life evolving and waking eyes of wonder. We thank you for the creatures with whom we share the world, for their lives so very different from our own and the richness they reveal. Above all, we thank you for Jesus, your son, who walked the growing earth and proclaimed a fearless kingdom of bird and lily, child and stranger, the beggar and the blind. Therefore, with all that has life through him, with animals and angels and all who hope for a new creation, we share the song of love which sounds from all eternity. that your Holy Spirit shall fall upon us and upon these gifts, that these fragile earthly things may be to us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his friends, calling them to his table. Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. As on that night, so here and now, he offers himself in touch and taste beyond all words can hold. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We present these gifts to you, O Christ, our offerings of thanksgiving as fruit of the earth and the works of human hands. We bring them to your table, to the glory of the God who fills all in all, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
We are joined in this Holy Communion with angels and archangels and the company of heaven and also the company of this world online. And the promise in Holy Communion is that it is for all who come to Christ. Whether you are here or not, Christ has you in Christ's hands. Let us pray together then for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, as you promised to be with us in the bread and wine that is your body and blood, grant that we may receive you spiritually today into our hearts, minds, and souls. Stay with us, be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you and have confidence in your loving care now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Christ in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Savior. Amen. I have an apology to offer to the people watching online. We promised a blessing for your pets we got so caught up in it that we just forgot, and I do apologize. So if you have a pet at home, if you have a picture of a pet, if you have a pet in your mind that you have or that you once had and you now miss, may God bless you. May God bless your animals. May they be gifted with long life and health. May they be signs to you of God's incredible creation. And most of all, may they be signs of God's unconditional love. And the blessing of God, the holy and undivided Trinity, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah.